Welcome to today's Lunch and Learn, sponsored by LifePath. My name is Bill Cheslock. I am a product manager based out of New York, and we'll be spending the next half hour talking about LifePath's uh, software-defined network product called FlexNet, and a little bit of the benefits um, that you can expect from software-defined networks. In terms of the formatting, um, I do have slides that I'll go through. Um, there's also a Q&A button on your screen. If there are questions, I will try to keep an eye on that and answer questions as they come up. Um, if uh, it gets close to the end, I will just continue with my presentation and then collect all the Q&As and try to answer them uh, at the end of the session. Okay. Uh, many of you are familiar with LightPath. We've been around for 30 years um, up in the New York metropolitan area, uh, but we are growing. Um, we've got significant backing from Altice USA and Morgan Stanley Infrastructure Partners. Um, we've uh, very successfully implemented a lot of transport products, fiber, dark fiber, um, lit fiber, um, E-lines, E-lands, OTS, um, and we're growing. We're growing not only in the products that we offer, but also where we serve. So while we started in the New York metropolitan area, you can see that we're growing up to Boston, we're expanding down to Florida, and we're expanding to more places in the coming months and years. So it's very exciting for us because not only are we expanding our product offerings, but we're also expanding where we are situated. The region is growing um, and we're able to provide our services to our customers as they grow uh, across the country. The next graphic kind of shows you a, a pictorial of the fiber network. Um, LightPath is based on the fiber network. And while our core products are just that, uh, transport products, uh, we take pride in offering many uh, managed services on top of that. Things like voice, uh, telephone, things like managed security, uh, what we'll be talking about today is the FlexNet product, um, internet access. Um, so we try to be the holistic company to provide telecom services to our customers um, as our network expands and improves in functions and features and, uh, and visibility and reporting. Uh, we provide, here we go. So we provide uh, software-defined networking because the demand for such technology has been growing over the last probably 10 years. Um, so I thought, you know, how do you describe why software-defined network is important? Um, I kind of think about it in terms of the requirements of technology and costs. So when you think about requirements, it's about business requirements. Over the years, businesses continuously try to, number one, be more agile, uh, operate quickly, expand, grow, shrink with market demand. So the business requirements consistently change as well as technology consistently changes. Um, and then there's events that occur. Uh, we just got through the COVID error. So we saw a huge spike in remote workers uh, as compared to office workers. While this is happening, businesses must continue to operate and the wide area network that the business uses to maintain robust communication, reliable communications, must be agile enough to keep up with it. And while the core uh, switched networks that we've used for years do that job um, somewhat well, uh, software defined networks do it better. Um, they typically do it uh, quicker, uh, more securely, uh, with fewer command lines. Um, there's a lot more graphical user interfaces and you'll see some of those today. And we maintain security throughout. So one of the underlying themes of LifePath's FlexNet is the need to maintain security because we all know cybersecurity threats are growing, they're not going away. And as businesses take more advantage of the internet of things, as we wanna become more convenient to our customers and give access to our services and products remotely, um, we need to maintain a strong uh, security stance and LightPath, uh, the FlexNet product does enable that. 
In terms of technology, um, companies are leveraging more of cloud services. Um, the idea of building data centers, uh, maintaining the equipment, cooling it, the power, heat, cooling, um, the technologists that maintain it. Um, as we see the growth of AWS and Google and Microsoft and, and hundreds of other cloud services, we see that companies are able to take advantage of those products and services and reduce their costs simultaneously. But how do you connect to those services? We all know that you can do it over the internet. They're all uh, internet accessible, but there are better ways to connect, more reliable, to have a more consistent customer experience. And that's where software-defined networks come into play. I use the term fail fast because as I was getting involved with our Cloud Connect products, um, the idea that businesses want to develop software development do software development in an agile method, right? Nobody wants to go through year, year long development efforts. We want to develop, test, and decide if the product's going to live on or if it's going to fail. And the tools that uh, companies like AWS and Google and Azure provide enable you to do that. They enable companies to stand up large infrastructures of compute storage um, and test their algorithms, test their software, and if it's not working, they're able to bring it down, de de deconstruct those environments relatively quickly. Again, not that the idea of building these environments is new, but doing them quickly, efficiently, and effectively is what's changing. And again, once you take advantage of software-defined networks, you can do that more quickly um, and securely. Um, the last bullet I talk about in technology has to do with uh, reporting and awareness. Um, the days of implementing networks and not knowing what's going on uh, are past. We all have high expectations that when we see, when we buy equipment, when we buy our networks, even from our homes, uh, we wanna see what's going on. We wanna see who's using the network, what applications are using it, how much of the bandwidth we're using, when are the peak times of utilization, um, and are there any threats? Have we been attacked? Are there any uh, mitigations going on? So there's a lot more visibility that's required into the network. And software-defined networks provide that. Lightpath FlexNet will provide that. And I'll show you some of those displays later on in this presentation. The last concept has to do with costs. We all know that businesses must maintain efficient operations and reduce costs. So when I mentioned earlier the switched networks that many companies use, which connect their, uh, their, their headquarters to their data centers, to their branches. Um, they're somewhat costly. Um, they take a lot to implement uh, configurations, a lot of command line interfaces, configuring multiple uh, boxes, routers and switches along the way. Um, so now with software defined networks, we get the opportunity to configure multiple boxes, to configure multiple locations, but from a single display, a single pane of glass. And that's been become very effective in reducing costs. Um, with the graphical user interfaces, you don't have to memorize, you don't have to have the technologist memorize all the command lines. Um, you can start to focus more on operating the business. You know, where are we gonna market our product? Where are we gonna start to build promotions? Where do we wanna expand? So we can start taking all that brain power and putting it towards advancing the business and not focused on just advancing the technology supporting the business. Um, the idea of OPEX and CAPEX, um, born, out, born out of the idea of not having to purchase uh, floor, uh, data center floors, um, not having to purchase servers and workstations, right? We can get rid of CAPEX, just go an OPEX model. We see a lot of companies migrating over to the cloud. And as I mentioned earlier, you can certainly get to your cloud resources over the internet, but you can do it better if you actually integrate that connectivity with your wide area network um, so that maybe all your branches can get into your cloud in a more efficient and reliable manner. Um, software defined networks allow you to do that. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more um, as we get into some of the features of LightPath's FlexNet. I see a question about a gift card. I'm going to ignore that one for now. Okay. 
So when we talk about, I'm sorry, I think I may have gone past the chart. So when we talk about FlexNet, we're talking about the ability to use a simplified software defined network architecture to allow you to connect your multiple locations in an efficient uh, and easy and secure way. Um, the centralized control goes to the portal, the management portal that's available to you um, when you get it. Um, and on the portal, you could see your locations, you could see which ones are up, which ones are having issues. Um, and you can start to see things like data utilization um, throughout your network. Um, you can get to that centralized portal um, from any internet accessible location. So whether you're in the office, whether you're at home, whether you're on your iPhone, you can see what's going on with your network and have an awareness uh, seven by 24. The idea of improving quality of service goes to not only reliability of the network, but also the data going across the network. So in terms of reliability of the network, we'll talk about the idea that at each branch, you might want to have consistent connectivity if you're a bank or if you're a financial institution or if, even if you're a school and you want the elementary schools to consistently have connectivity to the high school. Traditionally, you would get a couple of circuits over to that location. Uh, something like a LightPath FlexNet allows you to leverage the robustness of a DIA, a direct internet access, as a primary circuit, but then get a lower cost secondary circuit to be used as a backup. And it could be as simple as a broadband connection, uh, you know, 100, 200 meg broadband connection, depending on your circumstances. And now you have reliability so that if there's ever an issue or there's maintenance on the primary network connection, the backup network connection will pick up automatically. You don't have to do anything. It just happens. And if you want to be alerted to that fact, you can receive an alert. In terms of network traffic, we can start to prioritize the traffic. So as we converge on networks, as we put more video and voice on top of our data networks, we know that, for example, voice traffic needs precedence. We have to give it a class of service. And that is possible. That's what we do with FlexNet. So as software-defined networks take on converged data flows, we're able to prioritize the traffic so that when there is a perturbation or when there is an issue with the network, we can make sure that the most important traffic gets precedence and, go and goes through. I mentioned to you about security. Uh, we take security very seriously at LightPath, and we've integrated security into our offering. Um, there are plenty of software-defined networks that will give you kind of the transport and routing functionality, um, and then the security is an option. But we kind of bake it in. So the idea of having a firewall at every location, having the VPN structure between locations, uh, utilizing some malware protection, uh, content filtering, um, intrusion detection systems, all these securities, all these layers of security defenses, not only let you know what's going on and protect your network, but they work well into your uh, risk management plan and your uh, cybersecurity posture. You're able to leverage this into your policy so that if you needed to be compliant with any standards, uh, HIPAA, NIST, uh, CPI, you can leverage this infrastructure to strengthen your position. And finally, I talk about reporting and analytics. Um, again, we need to see what's going on in the network in order to understand what's happening now but also to be able to plan for the future. So using a tool like LightPass FlexNet, you're able to have visibility real time into what's going on. Um, you're able to plan from that. We can create reports daily, monthly, weekly, quarterly um, with statistics that show. So now if you have to create a, a proposal going forward to increase bandwidth to certain locations, to decrease bandwidth, you have the data uh, readily available to help you do that. And finally, insights, the idea that you could see where the network is utilized most, who's using it most, what applications are using it most, and that just guides more business decisions into forecasting um, and investing and, and more investments.
Um, a chart on features and benefits. Um, I thought these were high level enough that they most they would probably apply to most every company out there, right? Everyone wants to reduce costs, um, and leveraging software defined networks enables you to do that because you can get the functionality and the features that are sometimes available on very customized networks, but you can get them over some let's call them generic transports. So our product FlexNet does ride across any internet access transport. So while we prefer to use the light path DIAs in the majority of our locations, um, if there are remote locations, perhaps, uh, in, you know, considering California, Arizona, et cetera, and you need the connectivity, you can use a local broadband provider or a local direct internet access provider. Uh, we call that over the top. So you have flexibility in how you can get your WAN connectivity and you maintain all the security and features that, that you would want. Uh, failover, high availability, uh, traffic shaping preferences, et cetera. Visibility, the next row, right? Again, the idea that you could see now and at any time what your network's doing, how it's doing, where, where there are issues, where there's congestion. If there's a node that's been popping off the network every two hours, we can see that and it makes it much easier not only to understand planning for the future, but also to do some debugging, troubleshooting, and understanding that perhaps uh, Perhaps a location needs to be stood up, uh, repaired. Um, in terms of moves, ads, and changes, um, LightPath FlexNet uses the concept of zero touch provisioning. Um, but the idea is there's no longer a significant amount of programming that has to go into network devices to bring up, for example, a remote office, expanding to additional branches. If you want your employees to start working from home, so giving them home access into your network. These are relatively simple, simple changes and the appliances that are used to maintain this network are, uh, are easily configurable, very reliable, um, and very easily uh, activated once on site. Um, it's really as simple as we configure the device uh, centrally and then we ship out the uh, hardware appliance um, out to the location they plug it into the internet and within minutes, uh, that, that branch is online uh, and running. In terms of network flexibility and simplicity, um, the focus here is that there's many options that you could choose in terms of network underlying architecture, the transport. Um, we, we talk about uh, DIAs, direct internet access. Uh, there's the broadband we've spoken about. There's even uh, a, uh, LTS type, um, a wireless uh, backup solution that we offer. If you happen to be in a location where you can only get perhaps broadband and you still want a backup, uh, we could use, for example, an LTE was the acronym I was thinking of, uh, backup solution. So we can talk to you about that. Um, and then again, we wanna be customized to your uh, needs. My last bullet has to do with inventory. Uh, over the last few years, we've been dealing with a lot of technical ch challenges um, with uh, latency and getting equipment delivered. Um, but we do keep a nice inventory at LightPath so that if you need this technology now, we can deliver. Um, so that's an important competitive advantage for us. And I think it's worth mentioning. So what we'll start doing is talking a bit more about the visibility that I've mentioned to you. Um, the idea that uh, you can see what's going on in your network um, you could see it from a, a web browser uh, at your home in the office. Um, there is an application for an iPhone where you could see it. And there's a rich set of views so that if you need certain reporting or statistics, they're built in already. Um, we'll go through examples where you could see some real-time network statistics like loss latency, jitter, uh, which becomes important in voice uh, traffic. Um, talk about alerting and then reporting. I do see a number of questions came in. Um, so what I'll do is I'll continue with the charts. Uh, we have 10 minutes to go, and then I'll start going through the Q&A. Okay. So the first chart I wanted to show you was uh, one of the high-level uh, VPN charts that uh, we see. 
Uh, in this case, we're looking at our proof of concept network, well, I've had proof of concept. We're looking at the appliance called Bill C. And we can see that connectivity has been good. There's a lot of green. We can see what the general utilization of that has been. The fact that everything is green on the right-hand side, the VPN registry, the NAT type, it tells me that this box is pretty healthy. You can see in that circular chart, you see a red area there. So I know that there was some uh, failed traffic uh, historically. It's not right now because I'm looking at the connectivity view and I see everything's green right now. And then down at the bottom there, we could see uplink decisions. We could see how the traffic traffic is actually flowing. And if I set up a policy that said, for example, my voice traffic should be flowing over WAN one, while my data backup traffic should be flowing over WAN two, I would see that real time as it occurred in this display. When you want to look a little more detailed at a particular link perhaps between Bill C and the MJ combined appliance, we could go into this view. It was just a click away. But what it does is it shows that in this case, you could see that the MJ appliance has two WAN uplinks, uplink one and uplink two. And the SD-WAN, the Light Path FlexNet system, is calculating these uh, values real time. So I could see in the last day, for example, my latency between these two nodes has been approximately 45 milliseconds. Um, that's useful to know if over time the latency grows, you could say that it might be a problem. You need to investigate. Um, the jitter and loss, very important with voice uh, traffic. And then the MOS score, you'll hear about the MOS score calculation and how good is it or not, how bad is it. Um, the idea is that we see it real time. I mentioned to you about alerting. The idea that while um, you have this visibility and if you took the time, you could log in and see this information, there's plenty of times when you're going to be in meetings, you're going to be off, you'll be somewhere not near uh, a computer where you could log in, and you may want to receive alerts. Um, that's a very valuable capability of LightPath FlexNet. The idea that it will tell you when something happens, and I wanted to show this display because it's a very powerful concept. The idea that very simply, when we install the, the FlexNet solution, we automatically select these values, like configuration settings change, a security appliance goes offline, um, a VPN goes up or down, or the primary uplink changes. If you have a network of 50 nodes, heck, even 20 nodes, this is a way for you to know real time within a minute or two uh, that something changed and you may have action to do. Um, the idea that you can get this email to your home email, to work, wherever you might get, need it, um, this is a very effective way of maintaining awareness of what's going on with your network. So I wanted to take the time there. My closing chart um, with this presentation talks about ideas or thoughts you should have as you think about going forward with an SD-WAN. You know, why would FlexNet be right for you? What would you think about with your current environment? Um, this might facilitate or assist you um, in working. So that, you know, number one, uh, are you using legacy technology that costs a lot? Maybe you want to look at something that could be more cost effective while maintaining all the features and functions that are very important to you. Um, are you expanding to locations? Is your business the type that wants to grow, possibly shrink? relatively quickly without interrupting all your existing locations. So the addition or the removal, the modification of certain branches can be done relatively easy with the FlexNet type solution. Um, are you moving to the cloud? Um, if, if you're in the process or you have plans to migrate your data center applications storage into a one or multiple clouds, that's where SD-WAN, that's where FlexNet comes in handy because now you can make that cloud location part of your network and you would see its status as you would see any of your branch, any of your other branches or locations. Centralized view, centralized statistics and reporting. Do you need traffic prioritization? Um, do you wanna turn up the priority of one application over another? Are you gonna start moving more voice traffic? Do you have to pay attention to that over maybe lower bandwidth uh, connections? Again, you could set up that kind of a priority. I talk about compliance with uh, regulatory requirements because 
as we all get more uh, aware of cyber threats and as the government and as entities are starting to control it with PCI, HIPAA, NIST, SIPA, um, here we go. We are able to provide data, information, real time or in reports that shows how compliant your firm is staying so that you're not out of bounds. You're not in uh, a bad situation with any of your security um, or your technology related to the FlexNet product. And again, security is built in. Every site gets the security protection of firewalls, intrusion detection, um, content filtering, uh, malware protection, so that whether the, the system is, is remote or local at your headquarters, everyone can get the same level of security. Okay, that's my brief. Um, I know I kind of went through it quickly. Um, I want to say thank you, but I will start to answer some questions that I see. The first one, if you use a VoIP provider and have FlexNet SD-WAN set up, does it send actively over multiple circuits to ensure that calls don't drop? Same with Zoom. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, when the system is set up and you do have two um, internet connections at a site, the system we use, Cisco Meraki MXs, constantly pull the WAN health. And that's how you get to see those graphics that we were talking about. But as long as the connections are connectionless, which, which SIP voice traffic typically is, when one connection goes down, the traffic will route right over the other one. And if anyone's interested in seeing that um, in our uh, proof of concept network, we have a demonstration set up that shows that. It actually leverages um, ping traffic as well as Teams, we use Teams uh, to show how when a link breaks from one to the other, how it's semi, it's, you know, sometimes you see a blip, but otherwise it's transparent. So the load balancing or the uh, primary uh, backup works virtually seamlessly. Um, a question about load balancing, dual routing. Um, yes, uh, we can set up uh, fault tolerance in either on one appliance, having a WAN 1 and a WAN 2, um, or we could set up electronics uh, high availability where one box is acting as a backup to the other. Um, in the case of electronic high availability, um, it's, it's not active-active, uh, it's active standby. Um, but in the case of the WANs, WAN 1 and WAN 2 on an appliance, you can have an active-active situation where you can send certain traffic over the primary and certain traffic over the secondary. And if the system figures out that one of the links goes down, then it will push all the traffic over the available link until the, the, the one that failed uh, comes back. A question of can we get these slides after the presentation? Uh, yes, certainly. Um, you can get my contact information is here. Um, Kaylee, who, who managed this, uh, this awesome lunch and learn, uh, can be contacted and we can make these slides available, yes. What equipment does LifePath utilize? For example, Cisco? Yes, uh, we leverage Cisco's Meraki MX systems. Uh, we found that these systems are incredibly reliable um, and they satisfy, uh, I'll, I'll use an 80-20% rule. Anything you need for an SD-WAN, 80% of the needs we can satisfy. Um, and these boxes are very reliable. Uh, we do 67s, 250s, and 450s. Um, I noticed we have a minute left to go, so I don't get cut off mid-sentence. I want to say thank you for joining, and if you have any questions, please get in touch.